What's up, gang? It's Deltia from DeltiasGaming.com, back with Laceration PvP for Endgame and Elder Scrolls Online. This is a quick update to what I've been doing with my Dragonite Dunmer DK good old Inferno Nugget for Endgame PvP. Having a lot of fun, changed up some abilities and some skills, and still enjoying the Dragonite. This guide is meant for group play, small or large. The Dragonite excels at group play, charging in, dominating up front, and melee style magic DPS. If you like this type of combat, this build it will be for you. And like I said, group, end game, let's go with laceration update. What do you say we open up this video with some whoop ass? Yes, this is PvE, but I want to show you what this looks like in combat. Go through the skills and walk you through how to do it on your own laceration DK. So let's go here. Um, if you watch the other videos, bar one is the same. So you have invasion, which you're gonna leap into. I took this morph because a lot of people run out of stamina and can't CC break it. So it's nice if you have a long leap. Flame Lash, I do like this morph more because this build is more for survivability. The extra heal, like I taught you earlier with talons, goes a long way. Especially if you have a lot of champion points, I can crit heal myself for almost 8k. You got good old dragon fire scales, the good old reflect, you can't beat it. Green dragon's blood, and then I did take shifting standard. I don't use this um, often, that's why it's only level 2, but it's really important to have a healing debuff, major defile. The thing that allows uh, you to move this, and that's why I really, really like it. So. The problem is if you're going to play a Dragon Knight um, PvE, you're probably going to want the other morph of this and along with Lash. So you have to decide one way or another. Do you really want to go hardcore in a PvP? If so, this is how I set up my bar optimally for my playstyle. Back bar is a little different now. Fossilize here, which is utterly amazing. It stuns them, and then when they break it, they're immobilized. So it's like a range stun slash talents. It's incredibly powerful. Back bar is cleanse as well. I play group PvP, so this can save people's life, heal them, and get off those nasty fire dots since I am a vampire. And then I do have, whoops, on the world's tree, Elusive Mist. Elusive Mist is your get out of jail free card. I will explain how you use that in a bit. Plus it has the major expedition which Dragonites lack inherently. Good old fire ring and good old deep breath. Once I get Alliance rank 7, I do plan to take Magic Detonation here, um, or maybe even drop Cleanse for some massive AoE, and then good old Devouring Bats. So let me show you a little bit of combat here. Get up my wing, get up my flappers, I'm going to go in. As soon as I leap in, you can do one of two things. Generally, it's going to be a double Flame Lash and rock that self heal. Keep on getting your flappers up. So I leap in, double Flame Lash here, while they're stunned. I get stunned, no problem. Then I'm going to talons them again. Another double flame lash. That's massive self-healing. As soon as the talons comes down, I continue to apply it. That way I can proc them flame lashes. Interrupt. How dare you self-heal? I ran out of stamina. No problem. Use a tripod. Now, standard's up. Let me show you how powerful this is. I drop it here. Let's say they all move out of it. I can go back, drop it here. I'm also building up ultimate why I drop it. That's why it's so powerful. Keep applying the talons. Interrupts. This boss can't heal himself as good. Why? That standard's mobile. And that's basically bar one. I'm clearing out some just little NPCs there. So I know it's not, oh yeah, achievement. I know it's not PVP, but it's easier to explain that way. So that's kind of how you do it. Um, I really like the charge in having my, my flappers on the same bar as my green dragon's blood so I can be a block knight. Basically locking in enemies and just not dying. The key to this build is always holding block essentially. Really you, you rarely let go of your block as a dragon knight. Um, but you do have some stamina sustained issues which I'll show you how to get around that. Okay, so back bar here is destruction staff. Now this is more AoE. The trick here is get a bunch of mobs. So let's say we wanted to focus one target, like a high damage dealing target. I fossilize there, deep breath for self healing, and then spam. As soon as it goes off, 
Another deep breath. Boom. So you're basically gonna do a deep breath, which is gonna suck in some health, and it's gonna give you um, a damage in about three seconds. So you do a deep breath, and then usually one, two, explosion. Okay, so the mist form, where does this come in? Mist form is super awesome. You basically go in here, you're Im immune to stuns. Not immobilizes, but you're immune to stuns. So you take 75% less damage, but you also can't be healed for 75% uh, less healing. The trick with using this is, you, you've, uh, a lot of people are running, I think, my Omega build because I'm getting Jesus beamed a lot more, um, which is the Radiant Oppression from the Templar, and I'm also seeing a lot more Soul Assaults. So the trick to countering both of those, along with Magic Detonation, if it's applied to you, simply, Misform. Don't panic, Misform. If Line of Sight's not working for you, just get a Misform. So a lot of times, I'll be on bar one here blocking, get my flappers up, and now I'll have a Soul Assault on me and a Jesus Beam. Boom, bar swap, misform. I get my line of sight here. And a trick is you can come out of misform early one of two ways. So you can come out of it by bar swapping or you can come out of it by blocking. So what I do is misform, it's four seconds. So the enemy thinks you're gonna let it stand the whole time. And then I'll go misform, bar swap, dodge roll, and a big old self heal. Then I hold the block. And that's kind of your escape ability. Misform, and that's your only speed buff. That's it. So you're gonna have to know when to save your stamina. Because remember, they're gonna mobilize you when you're misform. So your your trick is gonna be dodge rolling right out of it. So you break that immobilization. Go back into mist. That's it. Okay, so that's pretty much the skills. I know that's pretty simple. We'll do a little bit more fighting here in a minute. Let's talk about gear, which is next. A little bit harder to get, but this gear setup rocks. Now, if that isn't the uh, most handsome Dunmer Dragonite, I don't know who is because this guy is like the fabio of dragonites look at that gear shiny pretty got that nice little chicken nugget right there tabard let's talk about gear so this is defensive remember defensive resource management is key i'm going off of ultimates for that earth and heart just like i taught you guys in the earlier laceration videos okay so what i do is go with the two-piece blood spawn i want impenetrable on both um, and I want magic. I do have health on here now. I need to re-enchant it just out of kudos. I am taking donations. So I go too heavy here, and then I go too light with the Warlock set. Warlock set is super ultra rare to get. Fortunately, I found my rings, courtesy of Pius. Thank you so much, and Annie. Um, so what this does is give you tons and tons of magic once per minute. So let's just show you how this works. Come on, run out of magic, Dragonite. Look at this build. It's hard to run out of magic. That's a good thing. Boom, that flood. 7,300 magic is just a burst of it. So hypothetically, what that means is you're going to be holding block. You're going to be, you know, doing this type of thing. You're going to be talons. And all of a sudden, once per minute, when you're in an oh crap situation, you get that flood of magic. Why is that relevant? Because you're going to be able to cast green dragon's bud at least twice, maybe three times if you factor in the regeneration. So it's an oh crap flood of healing. And I go uh, reduce cost on my neck and then two spell power. I want that whip to hit pretty hard, but I don't want uh, to be fully defensive. You could go reduce block cost here too and just be a, a walking tank, but I want some offense. So that's where I go with that. And that goes infused on the legs and in the belt. Why did I go there? Purely for looks. I know that's ridiculous, but I want to look cool. So I have the... Uh, Next set, Arena, which is Way of Arena. Reduce cost of break free. As a dragon, I am always charging in. I'm always getting stunned, um, especially with all the night blades running around using fear that goes through blocks. So you're going to be stunned a lot. If you don't have stamina, you're dead. And I used to roll Engine Guardian, but I like the Blood Spawn procking um, ultimate and using ultimates constantly. So I went with this set. It's just a staple in some of my builds. Now, if you want to go uh, less rare, more damage, you can go a four piece um, with your, instead of Warlock here, go a four piece healer set, and then a four piece Magnus. 
That's gonna give you a lot more spell power, but you're gonna sacrifice the reduced cost break free. So you're probably gonna have a little more trouble with stamina, which you can kind of offset in a couple different ways. So there are some alternatives for you. There's really no alternative for Bloodspawn, in my opinion, as a Dragonite. And the reason why is Bloodspawn goes so well with the Dragonite class, because good old Earth and Heart. Activating ultimate restores health, magic, and stamina. It's just too powerful to let up. Also, if you go to your Alliance War tab, and you do are lucky enough to get to Alliance rank uh, 8 or 10, you're going to get more ultimate every time you kill a player. Combine that with Blood Spawn, Dragonites make the ultimate, ultimate Blood Spawn equipping machine. You could go Mafalos, you could go Engine Guardian, or if you can craft, you might want to go Willow's Path. Willow's Path gives you 15% more stamina, um, magic, and health recovery. Um, so that's going to be good in combat if you can't do the A traits. Arena is found um, in Lower Craglorn Crafting Station. Warlock's pretty much impossible to get um, the jewelry pieces. And then Blood Spawn is Spindle Clutch Boss and Undaunted Pledges. Okay, so I went with three pieces of Impenetrable, two pieces of Infuse, and then good old Nernhome. On my Sword and Board Bar, I have 34,000 Resistance. My back, 28k. 34,000 Resistance on my front bar roughly gives me the hard cap um, for spell resistance, including some fire damage and mitigation. And I am a vampire. I stay in stage four. Reason being, I want to reduce costs for bats. So on my, my bars here, I have a really low ultimate cost, and then I have a pretty high 250 ultimate cost. So if I want uh, tons of resources back, I'm gonna use Shifting Standard. If I'm in an oh crap moment and need some self-healing and a flood of resources, I do this. Factor in the Warlock, I'm constantly having magic. That's why I can go two light, five heavy. I also have some high physical resistance, 15K. It's not that high, but it's high enough to prevent getting one shot by those stamina-based night blades. Attributes, 50 and 20, uh, 12 I mean. I should probably go a little bit uh, lower health. You wanna be at right around 20K in PVP. Um, 25 or more is pretty, pretty over the top. Um, so I could respect that. I also take tri-stat food and consumables, which we'll cover in a bit. But this is my gear. Um, I went, just go all magic if you can, and then disease damage on the sword. Go Nernhone every place you can in a combination of impenetrable. And then in the back bar, I go flame damage. Um, I didn't do the way of the arena for the staff. I probably could for a little bit more stamina, but I don't really feel like using eight rosin to do so. That's the gear. Now let's talk about consumables. Alright, consumables are the name of the game, um, especially as a Dragonite, you live and die by smashing down potions. I use a combination of two potions. One is Panacea of Health, it's a tripod. It gives you a flood of resources. Now I kind of have winged myself off of this, and a lot of you are probably asking, Deltia, why don't you have Entropy on your bar? Because I'm getting damage from spells, but I don't have that major spell buff. Structure Entropy, major sorcery. The reason I don't run that anymore is because I almost always have up panacea of detection increases your stealth detection it grants you major sorcery which is the same thing as entry for 40 seconds what's the cooldown of potions 45 so if i constantly suck these things down i can basically replace entropy my bar with something more useful though if you're having problems with resources go back to panacea of health and take off cleanse and use structured entropy it just so happens that i uh, can manage resources pretty well um, I also do use Tristat food, so more magic, the harder you hit, essentially, and more health is definitely useful as well. But if you wanted to even go ultra survivable, you could go Bystat or Tristat drinks. Lower that health, but you get a massive amount more recovery. So if we did that, we're right around 16k health, but our recovery is up there. It's ridiculous. Magic and stamina. So the reason I don't use tripods anymore, if you look at them, the reason you use them is you want the major intellect, which gives you the magic regeneration, and the major uh, endurance, stamina regeneration. But Dragonites already have something like that. They already have green dragon's blood. So that right there gives you the health and stamina, and you're gonna have it up almost all the time. Combine that with the Delta Detection Pot, which gives you major intellect. So there's really no reason to run those tripods unless you're out of resources. So if I pop that and my dragon's blood with drinks on, 
2k magic recovery, 1500 stamina recovery. Spell cap max, I have low spell critical, but a decent amount of spell damage. But remember, this isn't made for high end damage. It's made for surviving. So if you do want more damage, swap out some of those gear sets and get more spell damage. But I really like the panacea of stealth detection. So let's talk about good old champion points because I've got a lot recently and I'm gonna show you where the most effective place to put those are. Here we are in the good old champion tree where I have over 300 champion points. Yes, that's quite a bit. So whether you have 300, zero or whatever, you kind of need to know how to augment your build so that way you can control your resources, damage and mitigation appropriately because all this combined makes the build work. So gear, consumables, skills, along with champion points is gonna create a good synergy. So let me talk about what I use. Right here, this is kind of the reduced cost. I cast magic all the time, so I pump this into reduced cost. I do put a few points into reduced stamina cost because I want invasion to be usable often. That's the only really stamina ability that I'm using, but if it, it draws away all my stamina and I'm constantly invasioning, I can't break CC, I'm dead. So sprinkling a few points in here is good. If you can't, stick all with reduced magic cost. Going back over here, Mooncap. I go really high in stamina recovery because I'm using green dragon's blood and I don't go so high in magic recovery because I'm using the Atronach Mundus stone. So this is kind of how I pump up my stamina recovery, um, dumping tons of points into Mooncap. If you're having problems with magic because you don't have the Warlock set, and you want more DPS oriented, put some more points in here. You can also switch out the Mundus Stone to the Mage to do more damage and then put more points in here. Coming over here, I don't have anything in here, but this is a good thing to put if you have some extra points. Reduce the stamina cost of Roll Dodge and Break Free. So if I didn't have a way of the arena set, I would pump points into here. That way I can mitigate some of the stamina cost of breaking free all the time and also uh, removing immobilization by dodge rolling. So this is kind of your resource balance tree. Moving over here, the, this is the DPS tree. Um, I put a tons of points into this, effectiveness of any healing you receive. Why? I'm using green dragon's blood all the time. I'm using deep breath which chills me. And the double flame lash also gives me a good heal. So I like the extra points in here. Um, a couple other things, elemental expert, pretty much all of my damage comes from fire. So you pump that up obviously. Increase spell critical damage and heals, that's good. And then spell resistance. I do like 10 points in here. I'm running a lot of Nernhone, so I, I don't need to go overboard in this, um, but this kind of seems to work for me. And then once you get the increased spell uh, critical rating at 30, that's a huge, huge bonus. I also reduce the magic cost of uh, when you drink a potion by 80%. That's nice, why I chug down potions all the time. And we're really, really close to getting this sucker. That's going to be really cool. The rest of them I don't really point points into, though there is a nice combination uh, if you want to go staff to put a few points into here and then use fossilize to uh, stun and immobilize an enemy and then charge up a full heavy to rip them down. So that is a combo there that you can put, but that just depends if you use destruction staff and range more often. I'm usually charging up front in a group. Nothing in here. Moving on to the kind of the mitigation. So I, I talked about why I use Way of the Reno, how I get away with stamina. Another stamina cost sucking tool is reduced block cost. So you can get your block cost reduced by enchanting your jewelry pieces or using this, or even using set bonuses. But I dump a lot of points into here because I want that reduced block cost. Also a trick is if you use the Nernhone, if you use Nernhone and also uh, a Nernhone shield and have this 75 point passive, you'll get a nice, nice boost of spell resistance. I do put a couple points into resistance and I do have three pieces of impenetrable. So with this amount, I'm not gonna get bursted down and killed. That will allow me to lower my health a little bit um, so that way I don't insta-die. The middle tree, I sprinkle a few points into here. I do like the 10 point passive and the 30 point passives useful as well. Um, we tested Elemental Defender and it doesn't seem to work that well in reducing the flame damage. And I'm a dumber as well, so I go heavy spell resistance rather than heavy, heavy Elemental Defender. And because I'm running so much Nernhone, I don't need to use a spell shield. But if you're below the hard cap of 33,000, I would put some points in here. Moving on. 
as Shepard goes and barks and goes does something. Um, I don't have a whole lot of physical resistance, so the extra 5% while wearing heavy five pieces is beneficial for me. A lot of people are running stamina builds, so I want to prevent getting destroyed by them. Quick recovery, uh, increased effectiveness of healing received. That's good with Dream Dragon's Blood and the Blessing Passive. Those two combined make for a nasty self-healing machine, which is exactly what I want to do. And that's the champion points. And that is the build. Let's go fight again and just talk about combat one more time so you understand it and you can apply it in PvP. All right, let's go in an area with a high density of mobs and show you how I just kind of manage resources and fight. So first thing I want to do on a solo mob is show you the trick of fossilize. Fossilize stuns them right there until you do a certain amount of damage. It also gives you a flood of stamina based on the earth and heart passive and they don't break unless they CC break or you do damage to them. Perfect opportunity to charge up a heavy, rip it off. So if you're in kind of a dual situation and you're getting a block knight like me, fossilize them. That is the trick. In certain situations like AOE, where I pull a lot of mobs here, or a lot of players, and it's going crazy, and we're on the flag, calm down and your panic button is the miss for it. Don't panic. Get in mist form. I'll stand in red. Look at this. Just calm down. Get in mist form. Remember to dodge roll after the mist form. Boom. To create some space and get out of mobilization. You should have some ultimate built up now. So drop a ship you standard on. Talons, back bar, deep breath, bangeranger. Dead. That's kind of combat. It's simple, it's easy, but it's effective. Staying on targets and whipping the crap out of them is pretty fun and rewarding. People will hate you for it. You will whip the crap out of vampires to death. Another good thing you want to do at practice is probably putting your oh crap buttons in the same place. So for instance, I have my green dragon's blood is an oh crap self heal. My misform is an oh crap run away. So you might want to change your key binds so that every character Every playstyle, your oh crap key is in the same place. I see a lot of people in PvP that panic and they just kind of freeze up and don't know what to click. Have it in the same key. So your brain goes, oh my god, I'm about to die. What do I do? Click five. Click it a lot. Oh my god, five. I mean, just click the thing. So that way you can operate and not just brain freeze up. Same thing here. You'll notice a couple different things. My fossilize is on my first key along with my invasion. So if invasion's gonna go to them, this is gonna stun them at range. Kind of the same concept. My talons right here is my AOE damage ability. Same thing with deep breath. So I kind of try to get the, both of the keys doing the same sort of thing. The nice thing about this build is no matter what, if you just wanted to play with one bar, you could. In group PVP, not solo, it's hard to bar swap all the time because there's so much stuff going on. There's a lot of lag until Imperial City gets out. You have to be reliable with one bar. Healing, damage, stuns, CC, and single target and AoE. This bar is your go-to. If you wanna go back bar, more healing, more AoE, maybe more range, anything, change it. But I'm telling you right now, this bar has worked for a very, very, very long time. And that is Laceration Endgame PvP. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I can't wait to read your feedback on the Dragonite PvP build. Hopefully you guys have got something out of this. And I will be on to the Sork and the Nightblade very, very soon. And yes, I haven't forgot about the Sigic Ambrosia Potion. I will be coming out with that after I get some more information. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy this. Have a great Father's Day.